in Jerusalem. I'm the director of Canada House, the prayer garden here in the Canada House in Jerusalem. Just a few words about the upcoming Passover. We are about to celebrate Passover on Friday. Uh, and it's, a, it's an incredible holiday. It's a family holiday. It's a, it's a holiday that even secular Israelis will participate in. And oddly enough, around the world, more Gentiles will celebrate Passover than even Jewish people will. Passover is incredibly important for us as believers in the Messiah, because Jesus and all of his disciples celebrated Passover in every one of the Gospels. So this, this story is uh, central to the, to the Gospel itself. Passover is a feast uh, of deliverance, it's a feast of, of redemption, and it's a, it's a feast for all of the family to participate in. It's a memory of the Exodus, this is true, but it's a little bit more than that. Uh, the, the Passovers that we celebrate today are a little different from the first Passover that we actually are remembering, the Exodus from Egypt. So let's have a little look at the Passover that the first Passover that was in Egypt. First thing we note is that it was actually outside the land. And so the first Passover didn't occur in Israel and there was no temple. So the Passover lambs could not be sacrificed by a priest. In fact, they were sacrificed by the family. The head of the family acted as priest for his family. It was an interesting theological point that, uh, gentlemen, we are meant to be prophet, priest, and king to our families. Uh, and everyone there is present within the home celebrating. Now, the Passover lamb is not for sin, never has been, and was never thought that way. The Passover lamb was, was sacrificed and the blood was put on the doorposts, and anyone inside that house was, was saved from the wrath of the angel of death. So it wasn't about repentance. This isn't about for sin offering, it's actually uh, obedience. You were, you were saved from the angel of death because of obeying what the Lord had instructed you to do. We also might notice uh, in, the, in the Exodus narrative that there's no wine mentioned, just the lamb, unleavened bread, some bitter herbs, and to eat it in haste. Because there's also going to be motion. The Passover is not something that you can actually do passively. This is something that you actually participate in actively. Even today, you sit down and you actively drink and eat and fellowship and pray, as well as remembering. It's not something you just do, do quietly. You can do it quite noisily. A lot of traditions had added into the Passover since the first one to the time of Jesus. Most Jews were not living in Israel at the land of, in the land of Israel at the time of Jesus. Most Jews actually lived outside the land of Israel, uh, even as they do to this day. And so you could not offer a Passover lamb except at the temple. So most Jewish people didn't have lamb at Passover uh, at the time of Jesus. And so bread, the, the element of bread had become very much more symbolic and had a deep meaning as, as part of the Passover sacrifice. And so we see in the Gospels that Jesus makes no mention of the Passover lamb. He makes mention of bread. He picks the bread up and says, this is my body. And he takes wine, which was not there in the original Exodus story, but had been added into the Seder, into the Passover meal. And he gives that meaning where he says, this is my blood of the new covenant. How do these things, uh, Passover and covenants, fit together? Well, Passover, the exodus, is not passive, as I've mentioned. It's motion. It's movement. You don't remain in Egypt. You don't remain under bondage. You don't remain in the kingdom of darkness. You get out. You move from darkness to light. You are saved from bondage into freedom. And not only that, 
you are also delivered from ignorance of God. The Jewish people did not know anything about the Lord in Egypt. And you move to Mount Sinai. And there at Mount Sinai, you encounter God for the very first time. And you take part of a covenant. And so Passover is movement. Passover is not passive. And Passover ushers in the, the new covenant where we are to be a holy people before the Lord. And there's a lot there for us to contemplate this Passover, uh, a lot there for us to dwell on and celebrate deliverance, redemption, and, uh, and the new covenant that comes through the Passover land. Shalom from Canada House.